In this lecture, we will discuss the Graham's law of effusion or diffusion. Students, let's discuss the phenomena of effusion and diffusion first. In the left hand side, you can see a container which has a separation in it. This separation allows the two gases represented in red and green dots to be separated. Gas has a peculiar property of rapid and random motion. So when this separation is removed, gas molecules intermix in such a way to form a homogeneous mixture. This homogeneous mixture is formed because red molecules have a high concentration on the right side of the container and when this separation is removed they move toward the left side and green molecules having higher concentration on the left side move toward the right side which means molecules moved from their higher concentration to their lower concentration and form a homogeneous mixture and this mixture is formed because molecules move rapidly and randomly and from their higher concentration to their lower concentration. It happens in the liquids and gaseous system both. Uh, it also happens in the uh, biological cells where ions and molecules move in and out of the cell by the process of diffusion. Right. So uh, let's discuss what is effusion. It is same to the diffusion but the only difference is uh, it is the escape of molecules from the narrow opening from higher concentration to their lower concentration. The right side of the container has a vacuum and the left side has the molecules presented in the blue dots. So when these molecules move in uh, rapidly and randomly come in contact with the hole, they escape from this hole and move toward the area of lower concentration. So this type of uh, phenomena, which re is resulted due to their concentration difference, but from the narrow opening is called effusion. So Graham's law is uh, basically related with the phenomena of diffusion and effusion and it relates the rates of diffusion and effusion with the density and molecular or molar mass. So Graham's found that diffusion and effusion is affected by change in density or change in molecular mass or molar mass of the gas. So according to Graham's law, rate is inversely proportional to square root of density. Higher the gas, density lower will be its rate of diffusion so in order to eliminate the proportionality sign we have to use a constant which is k in this case and it is multiplied with the one by square root of d uh, value of k can be found by multiplying a rate of diffusion or effusion with the square root of density so this is the graham's equation which can be used for different gases and it can be used to relate the different gases rates of diffusion and effusion let's say uh, the graham's equation for gas one is r1 multiplies square root of d1 is equal to k which is for gas one and for gas two R2 multiplies square root of D2 is equal to K. So dividing both the equations, K, K will be cancelled out and uh, it will result an answer of 1. And when D, square root of D1 by square root of D2 is brought on the right side of the, right side of the equation, this factor will be inverted. So equation will become R1 by R2 is equal to square root of D2 by square root of D1. As density is... Uh, related with the molecular mass as d is equal to m by v. Students keep in mind in Graham's law volume, temperature and pressure. All these three quantities are kept as constant quantities. So d will be directly related with the molar mass. We can replace the density with the molar mass as r1 by r2 is equal to square root of m2 by square root of m1. This is the final Graham's equation, uh, which is uh, telling us that rate of diffusion or effusion is inversely related to the molar mass of the gas. A gas having a high molar mass, greater molar mass, will have the rate of diffusion lower. Let's demonstrate the Graham's law with an example. This is a glass tube which is 100 cm long and it has two openings at its both ends. Both these openings are covered with the cotton soaked in HCl and NH3. 
when these nh3 and hcl are allowed to react they always form the white fumes of ammonium chloride which is observed at this place which means nh3 molecules had covered a distance of 59.3 cm and hcl molecules have covered a distance of 40.5 cm which is clearly showing that hcl and nh3 molecules have not covered the equal distance which means the rates of diffusion of hcl and nh3 is different now apply graham's equation to this data r nh3 is e divided by rate of diffusion of hcl is equal to square root of molar mass of hcl and square root of molar mass of nh3 as molar mass of hcl is 36.5 and for for nh3 it is 17 so putting these data in this equation we will find that both sides of equation are equal to each other 1.46 now let's further discuss it with an example 250 cm cube of hydrogen gas effuses four times faster than 250 cm cube of an unknown gas so what will be the molar mass of the unknown gas uh, according to the data volume of the hydrogen is to 50 cm cube and that of unknown gas is also to 50 cm cube which means volume is kept constant and in the graham's law pressure temperature and volume should be constant in order to relate the rate of diffusion with density or molar mass right so the rate of diffusion of uh, an unknown gas let's say it is it is x so it will be equal to 1 and rate of diffusion of hydrogen will be 4 molar mass of hydrogen is 2 g per mole so what will be the molar mass of an unknown gas apply the graham's equation uh, putting and put the data as uh, square root is present in order to eliminate the square we have to take the square on both sides and it will result square of 4 is 16 and square root will be cancelled out with this square so uh, multiplying 2 with the 16 we will get an answer of 32 which means mx is equal to 32 g per mole and is the molar mass of oxygen and the unknown gas is oxygen so in this way we can find the rates of diffusion molar mass of the gases and from the molar mass of the gases we can find which gas is involved in the process so graham's law relates molar mass with the rate of diffusion and also relates the density of the molecules with the rates of diffusion and from the graham's law we can find the rates of diffusion and effusion and molar mass and in turn what gas or what compound is involved in the process which is also found through the graham's law so this is all about graham's